What is good, y'all? This is Taji Akib, host of the You the Crazy One podcast. Taji Akib, the wolf, hip hop artist extraordinaire, all that good stuff. And today, I want to introduce a special segment to the podcast that I am going to call for now Crazy Same Thoughts. I'm saying for now because I'm not sure I want to stick with that. I was trying to decide between that and Wolf Words, but I decided on Crazy Same Thoughts and it'll probably stay that way. But just in case it don't. I'm just saying for now, but it'll probably stay that way because I think it's more descriptive of what of what I'm actually intending for this segment to be. And it kind of ties in better with the whole podcast theme, podcast name and all that. So crazy saying thoughts where I'm just going to be talking about the crazy, quote unquote, crazy ideas that bounce around this overly active brain of mine on a regular basis. And just like the theme of the podcast, the idea of it is that. These ideas may seem crazy or off the wall or whatever you want to call it, but when we really think about it, maybe not so much. Overall, the idea is just to inspire deeper thought. And it actually ties in with where I want to go with today's crazy sane thoughts. In, in a way that I tend to believe that the masses, and I think a lot of y'all notice if y'all listen to my podcast, the masses are usually the crazy ones and that the individuals are usually going to be more sane because they're, they're the ones that are seeing things as what they are more often than not. And the masses are the ones seeing things the way that the system directs them to see them. And uh, with that in mind, I've been thinking about how when I'm driving Uber and Lyft, right, when I'm doing my ride share work, it seems like there's no bad people in the world. Not none because I've had a couple run-ins, but in, in the time I've been doing this, put it like this. You would think that from my experience of driving ride share that there are no bad people in the world. And I'll just use racism since, the, you know, that's something we identify with the most as black people as bad people being. There's no racist white people in the world when I'm doing ride share. And we all know that's not true. We all know that, you know, these great people when I'm driving them around, these great people with great conversations to see me as just an individual. Like, I forget myself. I'm like, this old white lady, this backwoods white guy <laughs> just talking to me. Like, I don't think about it till they get out the car that they're white half the time, that they were white. I remember I had this white dude one time sounded like a brother. He was saying, my boy. You know, you could have replaced it with nigga. You would have thought he was a brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like my boy, like the slang way. You know what I'm saying? When he got out, I was like, oh, damn, I forgot this dude was why I'm talking. I was, about to, I was about to use words that I use with just black people and talking to this dude. <laughs> Forget that he was white. Obviously, he grew up around black people and stuff. But and he probably, this dude probably wasn't racist. You know, a lot of y'all think that every white person is racist. I don't happen to believe that. But I don't think this dude is racist. But you know that there's some percentage of those white people that were in my car that were racist, just by the percentage of we know, what we know exists out here in the real world. But you would never know. And I was wondering about why that is. The reason I think it is, is because on a one-on-one, I believe that on a one-on-one basis, most people lean towards trying to be good people. Most people want to be good people. Most people want to be liked. I believe that's human nature, for the most part. Mass racism, systematic racism, caste systems only work when you can generalize the group. So what I mean by that is when a, when a relationship with a person becomes more personalized, which is bound to do on a one on one basis, most people are going to lean towards being sympathetic to that individual's plight. You're going to care about what happens to them on a more generalized level. You don't have to do that. You can just as soon as that person gets out of my car, for example, now I'm just another I'm talking about the racist one. Now I'm just another black person. When I'm one on one with them, I'm a human being. All right. When they get out that car and they, they now join the masses and they go out there on social media, whatever they're doing, they can type all their horrible stuff, which you know a lot of them, do, a lot of them are doing. Because anybody gets on social media, it's just a release. for A lot of them seems like it's just a release for the most horrible parts of themselves. When they get out there with the masses among their peers and their groups of people that they can disappear into, that's when you see the bad side of those human beings. On a one-on-one basis, they want to be liked, and I think they want to like for the most part. That's why oppressive rulers design their systems to separate. And you can, if you really want to dig into it, you can even look at the conspiracy behind things like COVID or whatever the case may be. Like, the more you separate people, the more you generalize everything, the more control you have over their thoughts. Racism is a man-made concept. We have to acknowledge it as those who are oppressed because we're a part of a racist system now. And we're victimized by it. So we have to acknowledge it until it's eradicated, which it may never be. If it's eradicated, it's probably going to be replaced by something more caste related, which I think is the the grandfather of racism. I'll put it that way. Unfortunately, while I feel like human beings are good at heart, I think human beings are power hungry. And that power part replaces the good part 
It overpowers it, just like evil does oftentimes. And when that overcomes the good part of our nature, that's obviously when we begin to hurt other people. So why do we just go along with these systems? Think about the arts, right? The more arts become generalized, the more it's watered down, the less control we have over it, the more destructive it becomes, the less educational it becomes, the uh, less creative it gets. It's all by design because individuality is one of the clearest paths to freedom. Once you get rid of the desires to be true individuals in the human race, you pretty much have a stranglehold on people's free will. You have a stranglehold on people's freedom. Why do we continue to allow ourselves to be pawns? Why do we continue to allow ourselves to be controlled? Make an effort, y'all, to be individuals, real individuals. I'm not talking about getting a unique tattoo. I'm not talking about coloring your hair. I'm talking about being a real individual in the way that you think about the world and think about the things that you encounter out here. See things as what they are if you can get yourself to do so. Because racism, caste systems, and things like that are only ideas that exist because people made you believe that they mean something. Look at caste systems because that's the most ridiculous one. Racism, at least you can see a person's color. You can identify. Caste systems are, exist between, oftentimes between people who look very similar. Nobody looks the same, but you know what I'm saying? Look very similar from the same culture, same race, all that. And it only exists because someone is literally telling you that this person is less than you. <laughs> and they figured out some way, some type of way to determine that this person is less than you, even though you pretty much look like the same people. It just makes less sense to explain because at least with the with race, so-called race, because that's made up as well. At least with that, you can identify the differences between people with your eyes. However, that's also even done with people who look the same. If you look at the Holocaust, for example, most Jewish people are white, but they say they're a different race. <laughs> white, black, whatever, like. Racism is just a hard term to describe anyway because it's made up. But if we're going to use those terms, Jewish people living in Germany at the time of the Holocaust were white just like the Germans. The Germans just figured out a way to try to distinguish between them. That's why they shaved their hair and all that kind of stuff. When they, when they did identify them, they would shave their hair and everything. So now you can see them, right? You can see them as being so-called less than you. Now you can identify them and you can make judgments based on that. And you got all these people, I, I owe Hitler and all this stuff. Like, people were fucking nuts. <laughs> people are fucking nuts If you weren't told that these people were less than you You wouldn't know you treat them just like your best friend You know, they, Or they, they could be your best friend They could be your wife or whatever the case may be Wife, husband, whatever Right? We are fucking crazy And that's why I call this segment Crazy Same Thoughts Because I believe Talking about stuff like this I'm the same one How many of y'all listen to this is really going to disagree with this Problem with this is that The people who need to hear this probably aren't even going to listen what, this is what people need to strive to do, and this is what you need to do, need to explain to your peers, counterparts, people out here in the world. When you have these kind of conversations, stop being goofy. <laughs> stop being goofy because it's serious, man. Our existence kind of hangs in the balance based on these types of things. Let people know that you need to seek out things you don't know, not things you already think you do know. Because that's the only way that we progress as a human race. I'm going to end it right there. Taji Aki, two fingers. One love. Be safe, y'all.